everyone, Jennifer Maker here. It's a beautiful day to talk about dye sublimation printers. Sublimation is a really cool process that lets you transfer dye onto materials such as plastic, card, paper, or fabric using heat. And while you can sublimate with products such as Cricut's infusible ink transfer sheets and pens, you can go way beyond that with your own sublimation printer. With a desktop sublimation printer, you can print full color designs like my subla flower and transfer them to surfaces without any weeding. This is on MDF and this one here is on a garden flag. Isn't this cool? So to help you pick the best sublimation printer for your needs and budget, I'm doing this video. This is for those of you who are just getting started in sublimation and looking for the best printer, or those of you who might want to be upgrading to something better. I'm going to give you an up-close look at four, count them, four different sublimation printers, including purpose-built sublimation printers and converted inkjet printers. So I can get really specific about the pros and cons of each. We'll compare availability, pricing, setup, speed, quality, and convenience to choose the best sublimation printer for you and your projects. So come with me to my craft table so I can show you each of my sublimation printers. So dye sublimation printers are the cornerstone of sublimation crafting but I know that picking the right one can be stressful. So I've gathered the four most popular types and brands of sublimation printers here for you to see and test with me to remove all of the guesswork out of picking the right sublimation printer for you. So first we have the Sawgrass SG500, which is a purpose-built sublimation printer. Sawgrass has been making dye sublimation printers for over 25 years, and they are pioneers in their field. Sawgrass does make a couple of other fancier sublimation printers. This is their entry-level startup printer. Second, we have the Epson SureColor F170, which is also a purpose-built sublimation printer. Epson has been making commercial grade dye sublimation printers for high capacity applications for quite some time now. And they recently brought out this desktop version for those of us to use at home. And third, we have an Epson EcoTank inkjet printer that is filled with sublimation ink. EcoTank printers have a large reservoir over here on the side that make it easy to use sublimation ink rather than inkjet ink. And fourth, we have an Epson Workforce inkjet printer that is also filled with sublimation ink. Workforce printers have cartridges, but you can get empty refillable cartridges and fill them up with sublimation ink instead. So all four printers produce great quality prints with sublimation ink that can be transferred using heat to materials such as polyester fabric and sublimation ready ceramics, plastics, glass, and wood. It is super cool. So which is the best? It's going to depend entirely on your needs. Let's talk about each one and then I'll give you my personal opinions on what works best for whom. So first, let's delve into the Sawgrass SG500, which came out a couple of years ago, and it's updated from an older model. I found my Sawgrass printer on Amazon, but you can also get them from dealers who specialize in heat transfer technologies. You cannot get it directly from the manufacturer, however. You'll find links to places that sell a Sawgrass at jennifermaker.com slash sublimation printers. It's not hard to find or get a sawgrass. I ordered mine and I had it the next day from Amazon. So availability is really great. I rate it a 10 out of 10. Of the four desktop sublimation printers that I reviewed, the sawgrass was the most expensive, but not by a huge margin, surprisingly. The sawgrass starts in the mid 500s at the time I'm making this video, but that price does include starter ink, uh, starter ink cartridges, paper, dedicated software, and free one-on-one -on -one setup, onboarding, and support. Once you run out of ink, new cartridges are several hundred dollars for a set of four, which is the most expensive of all of these printers here. For that reason, I give the Sawgrass's price a three out of 10. So the Sawgrass is not for those of you who are looking to economize, but it might be right for other reasons. My Sawgrass printer came with paper and ink, and most of the ones that you order will come that way. It's pretty normal. I looked online and it looks really normal. 
You may even be able to get starter bundles with some blanks and designs like I did. This made it really easy to set up. Of the four printers, the Sawgrass was the easiest printer to set up. It was mostly plug and play, unlike the others. <laughs> Not only were the step-by-step -step directions printed right on the lid of the box, but the software which is available for Mac and Windows was really easy to use. It guided, guided me through the setup process quite easily. I give this setup on the Sawgrass a 10 out of 10. You can watch my full start to finish setup video of the Sawgrass at jennifermaker.com slash sawgrass setup. Now, how about speed, print color, uh, print quality, and color on the Sawgrass? We'll do a comparison between the four shortly so you can see exactly how they stack up. Now let's dive into the Epson SureColor F170. So availability wise, the Epson SureColor came out recently in November of 2020, but it's been hard to find ever since. I couldn't even find one on Amazon. And when I tried to order it from some other company, the order got bumped back several months because of supply issues. Perhaps that's going to be fixed, I'm not sure. I eventually found one on, on eBay. I'm not sure why it's so hard to find. I hope that this changes in the future. Their press release for this product says it'll be available through authorized Epson professional imaging resellers. So it may just be that Epson thinks this is too specialized of a product for mainstream resellers. It's hard to say what's going on here, but for now it gets a one out of 10 for availability because I had to work pretty hard to get this. The Epson SureColor F170 starts at $400. This is about mid-range for all of the printers in our lineup today. It is the lowest price for a purpose-built sublimation printer that I've ever seen. So there is that. The printer comes with Epson brand starter sublimation ink, but no paper. The Epson ink is $100 for a set of the four bottles. They're 140 milliliters each. This is a third of the price of the Sawgrass inks. And because the printer, the Epson, is purpose-built for sublimation, it's well-supported, and it comes with a one-year warranty. I think that's an excellent price for a purpose-built printer with support, and I get 7 out of 10. Setting up the Epson was really quite easy. In fact, it was the second easiest after the Sawgrass. I loved how easy it was to fill the bottles and I was able to print and press immediately after getting it set up. I give the setup an eight out of 10. You can watch my full start to finish setup video of the Epson SureColor F170 at jennifermaker.com slash Epson SureColor setup. Okay, let's talk about my third printer the Epson EcoTank. This is a popular one. You can find the Epson EcoTanks pretty much everywhere. <laughs> I got this one from Staples, but they're, they're also like all over the place on Amazon and even places like Target and Walmart. I feel the Epson EcoTank is the easiest of all of these four printers that you see here to get. And I rate its availability a 10 out of 10. The EcoTank printers range in price from about $200 all the way up to $1,000 and beyond. If you're just starting out, the 2000 series of printers tend to be the lowest in price and definitely do the job, even if they don't have fancy things like paper cassettes. Now, I needed a paper cassette personally because leaving paper out unprotected in something like the rear paper tray was not going to work for me. So that requires a 3000 or 4000 series machine and that starts at $400. And the sublimation ink that I used in the EcoTank is under $40, which is a bargain compared to the Sawgrass ink cartridges. So given that you can get started in the sublimation for a little over $200, if you're willing to sacrifice printer features, and ink is really inexpensive, I give the EcoTank's price a 10 out of 10. Now, setup on the EcoTank was surprisingly easy if you use the autofill bottles that are now available, like I did. If you use the bottles of ink that you must use with a syringe, setup is tedious and messy. I will only be recommending that you set up the EcoTank with the autofill bottles of ink, which is what I used, and they're widely available on Amazon. Now, I did need to download a special printer profile to get vibrant colors, but it was easy to find for my ink and it only took a few extra minutes. So it's pretty easy to set up, just not as easy as the Sawgrass or the Epson color. And I rate the EcoTank an 8 out of 10 for setup. You can watch my full start to finish setup video of the Epson EcoTank at jennifermaker.com slash Epson EcoTank setup.
And finally, the Epson Workforce Printer, which is very large. <laughs> uh, so this, mine happens to be large. They're not all this big. So this printer line began in 2008, seven years before the EcoTank, which began in 2015. So it's an older technology, and that means it's a wee bit harder to find, certainly harder than the EcoTanks. But they are still being produced and sold at the time I'm making this video. Their more mature age does make it easier to find deals for them, though, uh, more so than the EcoTanks I have found. So I have two Workforce printers, and I found both of them pretty easily. One I got on Amazon, and the other came from Staples. I rate the availability of the Workforce printers a 9 out of 10. But that said, you also need empty refillable cartridges in order to convert the Workforce into a sublimation printer, which you do not need on the EcoTank printer. So empty refillable cartridges are a lot harder to come by. I was able to find them on Amazon and get them next day, but I had to wait over a week to get them from my other smaller workforce printer. And there weren't many suppliers of these empty cartridges, which makes me a little nervous about their availability. So because of the need for empty cartridges to set up the printer initially, I rate the workforce printers a six out of 10 for availability. Now, the good news is that the Workforce printers can be the lowest price of them all. I got my smaller Workforce for under $100, seriously. But they can be more too. This bigger one here, which is a wide format printer, um, it can do 13 by 19, was $500. But given that it is possible to start sublimation with a sub $100 printer and a set of $20 empty cartridges and some ink, I give the Workforce printers a price rating of 10 out of 10. Setup, however, was hands down the hardest to do because you need to fill the empty cartridges with ink using a syringe and do things like prime them properly. It's tedious, finicky, and messy. It took me over an hour just to fill the ink cartridges. So it was way more work than any of my other three printers. I am not keen to do this again, let me tell you, and I'm gonna steer you away from it unless you already have one or you're ready for an adventure. It is possible to use something else known as a continuous ink supply system, or CISS for short, rather than filling the cartridges. But that also sounds really finicky, frankly. So I rate this setup on the workforce a very low one out of 10. You can see what I mean in my full start to finish setup video of the Epson workforce at jennifermaker.com slash Epson workforce setup. Now, what really matters, in my opinion, is the final product, which means we need to put these printers to the test. This will allow us to compare each one with the other in terms of print settings, speed, and quality. So I'm going to print the same design on all four printers from the same software and using the same sublimation paper. I'll use my pretty Subla Flower, which is a special design that I made just for sublimation printers. It allows us to test and see pretty much all color cues, vividness, alignment, gradients, text sharpness, ink consistency, and black density. And it's labeled with the hex color codes, which match up with the colors in other software, including things like Cricut Design Space. So you can see exactly what color you'll get on your sublimation printer. You can get my Sublo Flower design totally free at jennifermaker.com slash sublimation printers. All right, we're gonna print to each one and we'll see how they do. All right, so we did our test, and in terms of speed, the sawgrass was the fastest with 45 seconds. Uh, this, the second one was 
uh, the Epson Shore color at 60 seconds for its full, full color Subla flower print. In third place, we had the Epson Workforce at one minute and 21 seconds. And in last place was the Epson Eco Tank at a whopping two minutes and 12 seconds. Now I wanna note that the speed depends a lot on the model of printer you get. For example, if you get the cheapest EcoTank and the cheapest Workforce printers, they will be even slower than mine here. Yes, even slower, maybe twice as slow. So if speed is an issue, you'll wanna research various printer uh, speeds in advance as they really vary a lot. Now in terms of print quality, they all came out really sharp, which is pretty amazing, especially when you consider I converted these two. Here's the Sawgrass, the Sure Color, the Epson Eco Tank, and the Epson Workforce. The absolute best one of all of these, however, is actually the Epson Eco Tank. Let me show you this. So this is 5760 by 1440 DPI. And this is true of all of the less expensive models of eco tanks as well. Um, the best one, you can see it's print here. Look at that beautiful color there, it's so vibrant. Um, and also, really, they're all very good. So let's put them side by side so you can see how vibrant these are. Your sublimation print always comes out a little lighter than what you actually get transferred. So keep that in mind when you're doing your tests. Here's the Epson Sure Color, and here's the Epson Workforce. Now, of these, the worst resolution is actually the Epson Sure Color, which has a resolution of only 1200 by 600 DPI. But honestly, it's not the resolution that really matters a lot in sublimation inks, in my opinion, as once you transfer them, you lose some of that crispness anyways. Let me show you. Okay, so here is the Epson Eco Tank, right? You can see nice and clear. And then here, so we're gonna hold this up for you so you can see. I'll put them side by side. And here is the print. So you can see that we lose uh, some of the sharpness in the letters, but not enough to make it illegible. But this is true of all of them. They all did this, and it's really just, we're putting it onto fabric, <laughs> which is really just amazing, honestly, that we can do this. It just amazes me. I am just so, I just, I think it's so, so cool. It's magical is what it is. All right, so it's not really resolution that matters so much, it's color trueness. That's where I see the most difference. The sawgrass had very true colors right out of the box without any fussing about. Look at how beautiful and vibrant this is. This is my very first print right here. I was really impressed. The others, on the other hand, all varied. They were also using different ink. Uh, the sure color is using the Epson ink, the Eco Tank is using Hippo ink, and the Workforce is using Printer's Jack ink. Uh, once I fussed with them, and they all needed a little fussing, I the the best of the after after figuring out their profiles and all that sort of thing. The runner-up was the Hippo ink on the Epson Eco Tank because it really these two are actually really very similar in terms of quality, um, the color trueness compared to the original design. They really are. However, it's minor things. It's really very minor, right? You can see that if you just saw one of these in isolation, you would be like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. <laughs> if when you're a beginner in sublimation, I really think you'll be overjoyed with all of these. They all look really quite good. And they all transferred to my test surfaces really well. So in addition to these uh, this is 100% polyester satin that I bought at Joann's, so no, nothing fancy or anything like that. So in addition to this, I also tested sublimation ready garden flags. So here is the sawgrass. Now I want you to notice the difference in um, how vibrant these are. This is really white, right? So this is a little transparent, so it doesn't look quite as vibrant, but it's the same. And here is the Epson Sure Color. And I want to know also, this is what it looked like before I messed with its color printing or color settings, color profile. Look at this big difference in these colors, way darker than this. So this is before, this is my first print ever. And this is after I installed the appropriate, or started using, I should say, started using the right profile because it did get installed when I installed the sure color. I just, didn't know to use it in the beginning. <laughs> so, so 
that's how those look. And then here is the Epson Eco Tank. This is with the Hippo um, and A Sub profile that I got from their site, Hippo Inc. And this is the workforce, and here is its garden flag. Now, I need to note something here on this one. I want to show you. There is streaking in it. Can you see that streaking right here? So this is a, I had to fiddle with it to figure out how to get it to stop doing that. And it was related to my sublimation paper. So, you know, the sawgrass is definitely more plug and play, right? This is kind of in the order of plug and playness. This is the worst. This is the best, right? In terms of getting a good quality print from the very start. So in addition to the polyester satin and the garden flag, I also cut out pieces of MDF as just scrap. MCF from uh, our workshop and we cut it on a Glowforge in the same flower, sunflower shape. We painted it white and then we laminated it so we could sublimate on it. So I could see, also I just thought the design was so pretty and I just wanted to have some pretty supple flowers around. So this is the sawgrass. Look at how beautiful that is. And next is this is the very first print on the Epson Sure color before I figured out how to get the colors true. So it's a little darker, it's still pretty, not quite, not quite true. This is the Epson Eco Tank, which looks great. And this is the Epson work, uh, Workforce. So also looking really, they all look really pretty good. I'm really, really quite happy with them. I do want you to see, however, that there is a difference in color. So if we compare my two color choices. So here's the sawgrass and here is the eco tank, right? So let's compare the green and just ignore the fact that it's a little bit brown on the edges. That's just, it really needed two coats of paint, not one. Uh, but here we have the colors all matched up. You can see here's the red, pink, and yellow, orange, right? So I want you to see the color difference here. Look at the difference in the green here, right? It's the same exact design. It's literally just the ink and the printer profile and the paper. Um, you can see over here on this side too, right? So if you're trying to get exact colors down here, it looks a little closer. Um, you, it depends on your printer and you may need to fiddle with it. So if you're not super picky about color, you're probably going to be super happy. This is the one that I felt is closest to my original design. And this is the one that I feel is the follow-up. So this is the sawgrass and this is the Epson Eco Tank with Hippo Ink. Something else that is important to note is the software. So the sawgrass comes with sawgrass creative studio software, which is sublimation tuned software that you can use to print from and get great color and quality right out of the box. It's super plug and play. The other printers here do not have anything like that. You'll need to find and or buy something else. I used Adobe Photoshop on the Mac or Windows, which is pricey. CorelDRAW is another option, also pricey. Less expensive options are Affinity Designer and Gravit. Free options are Inkscape and GIMP, both of which have pretty high learning curves. Cricut Design Space is another free option, but it's significantly more limited and really only ideal when used in tandem with print and cut on a Cricut. So software is an important consideration when you're choosing your printer. If you already have something like Photoshop or CorelDRAW, you have more options. But if software is not your strong suit, you may be happier with a Sawgrass printer and it's included software Creative Studio. It was actually really easy to use. I didn't, all I did was I opened, up, opened it up and I printed from it. It's also important to note that you really need a Mac or a Windows computer to get good sublimation prints. While you may be able to print to them from a phone or a tablet, you'll be missing the printer profiles that gives you that true color. So if you don't currently have a computer, be sure to factor this into your budget. You can use either Mac or Windows computers with your sublimation printer uh, with any of these printers that I showed you today. And one last comparison is features. The Sawgrass, hands down, really has a lot more features. Not only is it plug and play, and I didn't have to fiddle with print alignment or color profiles like I did on all of the others, but it has a self-maintenance mode that keeps your printer in good shape even if you don't use it a lot. 
because maintenance is a thing with sublimation printers. You can't just let them sit there without using them. The ink heads can dry out if you don't use them every day or even every other few days. Yes, seriously. So the sawgrass, um, having the sawgrass means you don't have to worry about this pretty much at all. It just takes care of that. And the sawgrass has free image software unlike the others, plus support and a two year warranty versus the one year warranty on this um, and the no warranty on these. The sawgrass also comes with 30 minutes of one-to-one -one help to get the printer up and running. Remember the inkjet printers that you convert to sublimation have no support and no warranty and they require more maintenance. As with all things in life, you get what you pay for, right? All right, so there we have all four sublimation printers. The Sawgrass, the Epson Sure Color, the Epson Eco Tank, and the Epson Workforce. These are all totally valid printers for sublimation. Chances are, by now, you have a really good idea of which one is going to suit your needs the best. I hope you do at least. But you may be curious which one I like the best. So what matters most to me is quality and color and convenience. That's, those are things that matter. Of the four, I preferred the Sawgrass and the Epson Eco Tank, with the Hippo ink specifically. And in between those two, it gets a little harder to choose. So the Epson Eco Tank will have no support for it whatsoever, well, other than what I can find from others who are using it online, right? Whereas the Sawgrass is well supported in many different ways. But generally, I don't ever really need support on any of my equipment. That's just the way it works for me. So. I think it's going to be easier and less expensive to keep the Epson Eco Tank with the Hippo ink on tap as I can order it from Amazon and have it the next day. I can also get Sawgrass ink cartridges quickly, but they are more expensive. They're also smaller at 31 milliliters versus the 140 bottles that I can get with the Hippo ink. So not only is it easier to just get more sublimation ink bottles, but they're going to last longer before I have to refill them than with the ink cartridge as well. So in terms of price, I think the best sublimation printer is the Epson Eco Tank because the overall cost is lower, quality is just as good as the others, and the ink is going to last longer before a refill. That said, <laughs> maintenance is a really, really big factor for me. I am not going to use my sublimation printer daily or even weekly, let's be honest. I have many other things that I like to do, and I'm gonna find it tedious to feel like I have to print something every few days just to keep the ink from drying out on the print heads. And when it does get dried out, you need to clean the print heads, which takes both time and ink, two things I'd really rather not spend. So for this reason, and the fact that this one is really slow compared to this one, the Sawgrass is my go-to printer, despite the cost and the need to buy more expensive ink cartridges more often. Because a printer that works when I need it to, even when it's more expensive, is way better than a printer that is finicky and needs a lot more maintenance. And I'm really impressed at how plug and play the Sawgrass is. I don't have to fiddle with any of its printer profiles to get it to look right. I also really like that I didn't have to download or buy any extra software either. Yes, I have it, but I love that it has Creative Studio. Also, honestly, I love its colors. These are just my favorite, so that might be a big factor here too. So you have to decide between ease of use, convenience, and support, which I believe is the Sawgrass's strength, and economy, which I think is where the Epson EcoTank comes in. Both are totally viable choices, and really all of these printers are. You can make them work for you uh, regardless of these little things I'm talking about. And if you're feeling indecisive, ask yourself, what is the single most important thing to you? If it's ease of use or support, get the Sawgrass. If it's price, get the Epson EcoTank. If you want a combination, something in the middle, because you can't decide, get the Epson Sure Color, which will, it looks great and it has support and isn't as expensive. So what you pick is up to you. When you do get your sublimation printer, I recommend you print out my Subla Flower first so you can see your colors, saturation, and clarity and determine if you need to do any adjustments like printer profiles. You can get my free Subla Flower design at jennifermaker.com slash sublimation printers.
And you can learn more about sublimation printing in my Sublimation Startup mini course that covers all of these printers and much more. So get all the details over at jennifermaker.com slash sublimation startup. And that's it for today. Thank you for joining me. Until next time, this is Jennifer Maker reminding you to craft a life you love.